for we would I would go somewhere and preach, be on my feet the whole time, and when we would go out to get into the vehicle, I could not lift up this leg to get it into the car. Yeah. And I went to the doctor and they did some x-rays and the they sent me to a uh, chiropractor. Yeah. And she said, well, we can do an adjustment every now and again, but there's no cure for this. Mm. You'll never get rid of this. <clears throat> You'll always have this. Mm. Guess what? I don't have that no more. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Really? That's the Lord. Really? Amen. I just kept praying. I just kept getting prayer. I just kept knocking. I just kept asking. I just kept seeking. Amen. Didn't happen the first time. Didn't happen the second time. I don't know how many times it took. But all of a sudden it was gone. And it hadn't came back. Amen. Hallelujah. My, my, my. I still believe in the healing power of God. And you're still thankful. And I'm still, th oh, yes, I am. Amen. Still thankful. I, uh, I don't understand why when we pray for someone that healing doesn't come right away. And there are times that I've seen people, they would get prayer and get prayer, and they never would get healed in this life. Yeah. I don't understand that, but I know without a doubt that God is a healer. Amen. 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 I have seen Him heal, and He has healed me. Yes. Because He's a faithful God. Yes. Amen. Come on. That's what we've been talking about. Yep. Throughout this whole month, and by the, let me tell you this before I go on any farther because I'll forget. Sister Lynn Sims will be here next Sunday morning to minister for us. So please be in prayer for that. I talked to her yesterday and she'll be here, Lord willing. But we've been talking about this month being faithful. <clears throat> the Lord woke me up. Actually, He gave me a dream and woke me up from that on New Year's morning. <laughs> And you know, you've heard about it. It's the, the word that He dropped into my spirit was faithful. All right. And you know, you might tell some people that, they might think, well, that's no big thing. That's no big mystery. I've heard, like Brother Slee said this morning, I've, I've heard that word before. Yeah, but have we really heard it? Yeah. You know, the Bible says, let him that hath an ear to hear, yeah. let him hear what the Spirit saith to the church. Yeah. Amen? The Lord trying to tell His people that it's going to take faithfulness to be ready to get out of here. You can't live for God one day and live for the devil the next. You can't, you can't do this thing with one foot in and one foot out because sooner or later you'll find yourself out That's right, bro. not knowing how to get back in. So we've been talking about being faithful. <coughs> we've been talking about <coughs> being faithful in prayer, faithful in the Word, faithful to church, faithful to giving, faithful to God. When it comes right down to it, being faithful to God. And I'm not going to go back and review everything that we've went into, but I do want to drop these Scriptures in your lap just as a remembrance. Proverbs 20 and 6 says, Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. So we find out from the Word of God that finding somebody that is faithful yes. is a rare thing. Amen. And the Bible doesn't just stop there. David would write in Psalms, the 12th chapter, Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, and the faithful fail from among the children of men. The word faithful means to be trustworthy. It means to be persistent. It means to be consistent. The word fail means to disappear, to become extinct. So when the Bible says the faithful man fail, that means he's becoming extinct. It's getting harder and harder to find a faithful man. Amen? And God's Word is ever alive. It's not old. It never gets old. Amen? It's always new. Amen? You might have some old books at the house and you might have read them once. You might have read them twice, but you don't want to read them again. Right. You've already seen it all. You've already read it all. Mm -hmm. Not with this book. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it never gets old. Oh, I've been reading this book for 40 years. Come on. Since I was five years old. And I get something new from it every day. I get something new from it all the time. Amen. It never grows old. It's always <laughs> new to me. And I like Brother Sleese. I like the little things. Amen. Mm -hmm. You'll be reading along and it's a scripture you've read a hundred times. And then all of a sudden you'll stop and say, wait a minute. What's that say? What is that right there? I'm thankful today for the faithfulness of God. The faithfulness of His Word. Amen. I'm thankful today that He cares enough about His people to let them know what it takes to get ready. To give us the tools and the armor that it takes to be able to stand in this dark and wicked day. Amen? Come on. To tell us, to, to teach us to put on the whole armor of God. Right. That we may be able to withstand. Yeah. Amen? Right. Against the evil and the fiery darts that He Come sends on. our way. 
Amen. God's still more powerful than the devil. I know you might not get that from the morning news this morning. I know it, it looks like that, that liberalism is taking over America and there's not enough godly people left to shake a stick at, but God's got a remnant. Amen? Somewhere, it may be in the hills of Kentucky, it may be a little storefront church, but somewhere, somebody is going to be faithful to God. Right. Amen? Amen? That's what we've been talking about. Being faithful to God. Exactly. Not perfect. None of us are perfect. Right. None of us. Amen. That's basically what Jesus said to the crowd that brought the little woman. They all had a stone in their hand. Right. Basically, he said, yeah. basically he said, okay, you're the first perfect one, yeah. throw your rock. Amen. Yeah. None of us are perfect. All of us have faults and failures. But that has nothing to do with our faithfulness. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Be faithful in spite of the fact that you're not perfect. Be faithful in spite of the fact that you slip and you fall and you mess up. Be faithful to God. Amen. He is faithful to you. Yes, sir. He is a faithful God. The Bible says, Who then is the faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over all of his house, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom when his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. So God puts a high premium on being faithful today. We've learned this over the past Amen. few weeks. We learned the words that the Lord would say to the servants as they entered into the kingdom of heaven were, Thou it said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Not thou good and beautiful servant. Are you glad this morning don't take handsome or beauty to get into heaven? Amen. All, some of us be left outside the gate, wouldn't we? It doesn't say, well done, thou good and beautiful. It doesn't say, well done, thou good and talented or famous or rich. It says, thou good and faithful servant servant. Yes. God wants to drive that home with us today. He wants us to realize the importance of being faithful. The importance of being persistent. The importance of being a consistent Christian. Right. Amen? True. We all have ups and downs. We all have mountaintops and valley experiences. But every one of us yes. need to get to the place where it doesn't shake our relationship <laughs> with God. Amen. That we're still holding on to Him through the good times and through the bad. Amen? Amen? Amen. We learned that faithful is part of God's nature. It's part of Jesus' name. Yes. Revelation 19 11 says, I saw heaven open, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful, faithful. and true. Amen. Yes. Faithful. God's faithful. Jesus is a faithful God today. Amen. Come on. He's a faithful Savior. The Bible says in Revelation 17 and 14, we read this. Whenever the Lamb comes back. It says that when the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings returns, that they that are with Him are called, chosen, and faithful. Yes. Amen. Amen. Do you see how important it is today? Yes. God doesn't just throw, well, I think I'll just throw this word in there. It doesn't amount to much. Oh, it amounts to a lot. Right. Amen. True. So God calls us. <laughs> he chooses us. It's on our shoulders to be faithful. Amen. He didn't make you get up and come to church this morning. He's not going to make you be faithful to the house of God. He's not going to make you be faithful to give. He's not going to make you to be faithful to pray. He's not going to make you be, to be faithful to read His Word. He's going to say it's there. You choose. He's not going to force you into heaven. Right. Amen? You have a choice today. Like Brother Slee said, you choose to go to hell if you want to. That's what God said. I'm going to make a way. I'm going to give the very best that I have. Yeah. Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, yeah. came to this earth, walked as a mortal man for 33 and a half years, and then He died for you. And I said, all you have to do is put your faith in me. If you choose not to do that, there's always hell. I don't know about you, but that don't sound like much of a choice. Right. Amen? You can choose today whether to go to heaven or you can choose whether to go to hell. God's not going to force you into either place. You, say, you mean God sends people to hell? No, He sure doesn't. You choose. Right. With, your ref with your refusal of Jesus, you choose where you spend eternity. Yes. We talked about being instant in season and out of season. Right. We talked about being faithful with our witness. You see, I don't want Brother Dwayne back there, I don't want him to see a different person out on the street than he sees in here when he comes in on Sunday Amen. or whenever he gets to come visit. Come, right. come visit. This is his home. Whenever he gets to come be with us. Amen. Right. I, don't, I want him to see the same preacher at the IGA that he sees 
when he comes into this little storefront church. Amen. I don't want to treat him different outside the church right. than I do when I see him in the post office. Come on. That should be all of our heart's desire. Right. I want to treat you the same way. I want to treat you like my brother and my sister, like someone that I care about, someone that I love because I do, someone that I pray for. I don't want to treat you one way. But you don't get that. A lot of people today, they act one way in church and another way outside the yes, door. Sir. God wants us to be faithful with our witness. True. He wants us to be. He don't want. He don't want Brother Sleece to come in here on Sunday morning and lift up his hands and give thanks and his testimony and act holy and then go out and live like the devil. Right. That's not being faithful. No, sir. That'll hurt you bad sooner or later. Amen. Sooner or later, that that'll come back to haunt right. you. Amen. True. <clears throat> None of us are perfect, but we can all be faithful. We can be faithful in our testimony. Yes, sir. We learned, uh, I don't know if it was last week or not, about the church of Smyrna. Mm -hmm. Revelation is the second chapter in the eighth verse. I'm going to look at two different churches today in the book of Revelation. I'm not going to hold you for very long. I'm going to try not to anyway. Revelation 2 and 8, we learned about Smyrna. And it might be interesting to, for you to note that Polycarp at one time was the bishop of Smyrna. And you might have heard his name from a song that we sang. History tells of Polycarp, a martyr for the gospel's sake. They built a fire around his feet and they tied him to a stake. But the fire would not consume him, so they pierced him with a sword. The blood ran down, put out the fire, but still he praised the Lord. Amen. They took Polycarp, who was the bishop of Smyrna at the time, and I can't give you the date. I, I can later. I can look it up. But They brought him before the leaders and the powers that be of that day. He was 80-something years old, and they said, if you'll deny Christ right now, Come on. we'll make the rest of your life better than your life that you've had so far. Right. <clears throat> they said, but if you don't, we're going to burn you at the stake. Come on. And his reply to them in so many words was this. The fire that you threaten me with today will go out. But the fire that you, in there, that you are in danger of today is an eternal fire, and it'll never be quenched. He has always stood with me. I will not fors I will not forsake him now. Come oh, you're on. talking about faithful. Come on. Faithful to the end. Yes. Some of the writers and scholars from back in that day said that when they did tie him to the stake and lit the fire, it was as almost you couldn't even look upon the fire. It was as like if there was gold <clears throat> shining from the midst of the flames. Faithfulness. Yes. Faithfulness. I don't remember which disciple it was or which martyr it was, but Fox's Book of Martyrs recall, re, recalls one of them. As they walked him toward the place where they would put him to death for Christ, he said, oh, the place I've longed for, to give my life for the one who gave his life for me. Oh, my goodness. You're talking about faithfulness. Amen. Yeah. I can hear old Paul as he lays his head down on Nero's chop block. They probably gave him the option. So he said, you, you switch back over to our side and tell them you was just out of your head and you go back to persecuting the Christians, maybe we'll spare your life. I can hear old Paul saying, no, I don't think so. I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I have finished my course. He's been faithful to me. I've been faithful to him. Go ahead and chop it off. Glory to God. So he lays his head down on Nero's chop block and they take his life. Yes, sir. The Bishop of Smyrna would do that. Jesus would tell this church, mm -hmm. Revelation 2 and 9, I know thy works in tribulations and poverty, but thou art rich. All right. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Mm -hmm. Then he says, Fear none of these things that thou shalt suffer. All right. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried. <clears throat> And ye shall have tribulation ten days. Then he says these words, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He says, Be thou faithful. Why does he tell them this? Because sometimes being thrown in prison affects people's faithfulness. Right. Trials affect humans' faithfulness Amen. sometimes. Amen? Amen. Sometimes the valley experience will test and try your faithfulness with God. Yeah. So he's telling them, it ain't going to be easy. But if you'll be faithful, right. if you'll be faithful, he that endures to the end, the same yeah, shall be saved. Be if you'll be faithful unto death, I will give thee a crown oh, of Christ. life. Then he says, he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Come on. We find another church in the third chapter. Revelations 3, 
Beginning in the seventh verse, and I'm not going to read it all, but there's something in here I want to give you. This is the church of Philadelphia. See, there's only two churches that we find here that the Lord didn't rebuke. And that was the one we just read about and the one we're finished to read about now. Come on. Revelation 3 and 7 says, To the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. Come on. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength. Listen to what he says. And has kept my word, and has not denied my name. In other words, you've had a little strength. You're not the biggest church. You're not the strongest. You've been through some things. But you've been faithful to my word. You've been faithful to my name. All right. You see, this little church ain't the biggest church. Certainly not the strongest church. We are by far not the wealthiest church. But as long as the doors are open, we will be faithful to His Word. Amen. We will be faithful to His name. Yes, sir. You see, in the church age that we live in today, being faithful to God's Word is not that big of a deal because now it don't matter who prints it, who puts it out, or what's in it. As long as it says Holy Bible, they'll grab it and take it to church with them. All right. Thank God for people like William Tyndale that was faithful yeah. to God's Word. That wanted the closest thing to the original that they could get. We got a lot of confusion going on in churches today because everybody sitting in the pews have a different Bible. I don't know about you. I want to have the closest thing that I can get to the original. Why would you want to settle for anything else? He's looking for somebody to be faithful to preserve his word. Faithful and just and more than that, beyond that, he's looking for somebody that'll be faithful to allow his word to be the final authority in their life. Amen. Amen. To be faithful to say, Lord, nevertheless. Not my will, but thy will be done. Lord, let your word have complete fruition in my life. Lord, let your word be the governing source in my life. Yeah. He's looking for somebody to be faithful Amen. to his word. They had not denied his name. They had been faithful to his name. Did you know how much of the church today has denied his name and they don't even know it? Yeah. Amen? Right. We had someone at the first inaugura inauguration of President Obama. And you probably know who he is. He gave the, the prayer, and in the closing of it, he names Jesus, but he names off three or four other names. You see, we just take the name of Jesus. Well, we don't. But today in the church world, a lot of them just take the name of Jesus, and they throw it in there with Allah. Right. They throw it in there with Muhammad. Right. They throw it in there with, to appease all the other religions. Uh, oh, what do you call your God? Okay, well, we'll use that name. What do you call your God? We'll use that name. Mm. Oh, there ain't but one name. Amen. One name. And that's Jesus. Amen. The Bible says no other name under heaven whereby man can be saved. i got news for you today. If you're not faithful to His name, I, I have serious doubts about you being faithful in your relationship to God. Amen. Right. Jesus is His name. Amen. No other way of salvation. This church was faithful to His name. Right. They were faithful to His Word. Amen. God's looking for somebody to be faithful. Faithful to allow His Word to have rule over their life. Right. Faithful to follow His Word over the Word of man. Right. Faithful to His name. Not willing to compromise when it comes to the name that whereby only salvation can be found. And that is Jesus Christ and no other. Amen. Faithful to keep His Word. Faithful to keep His name. Right. Faithful in prayer. Amen. The church as a whole, and I know this because I evangelized for many years. Mm. Went into a lot of different churches, different denominations. And you'd be surprised at how little prayer I found in those churches. All right. Amen? The Bible says that His house should be called a house of prayer. Amen? God wants His people to be faithful to pray. As a matter of fact, Jesus said that in Matthew 21 and 13. My house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have turned it into what? A den of thieves. Why? Because He went into the church, and there they were buying and selling and carrying on. They wasn't praying. Amen? The church of today is in no better shape. Amen. The prosperity gospel has turned the house of God into a den of thieves. Oh, can I say that again? The prosperity gospel, the way that it is being preached and, and, and pushed on the market today has turned God's house into a den of thieves. It's all about money, money, money. Yes. One crazy preacher had money all over the altar as he screamed, Money cometh to me. Had the whole congregation in a frenzy. And they were all screaming, Money cometh to me. 
love of money is the root of all evil, and that has not changed. Amen. We all have to have money. Amen. Right. But if money has you, mm -hmm. you're in trouble today. Amen. Amen. Right. If money has you, you're in trouble. That's right. And the prosperity gospel, the way that it is being taught and preached in the majority of the church today, has caused God's house to be turned <coughs> from a house of prayer. They don't have no prayer there. Really? Into a den of thieves. Mm -hmm. That you go in, the lights are going, the strobe lights are flashing, and it's more like a rock concert. Oh. And then the main movie star, as it were, takes center stage. Come on. Actor. <clears throat> or the actor, amen, yeah. takes center stage yeah. and puts on his performance yeah. while people die and go to hell. Yeah. Amen. There you go. God's looking for somebody that'll be faithful in prayer. That's it, brother. Amen. Yeah. What well, have we forgotten the scripture? That says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, if they'll repent, if they'll turn from their wicked ways, have we forgot the call of God to pray? And not just in church, what about in our personal everyday lives? Very few Christians have prayer lives anymore. They don't even know what you're talking about. Sure, they say, bless the meat, let's eat. But I'm talking about praying on a daily basis like Granny used to do. If you went over at the wrong time, you might hear Granny in the back room. Ooh, Jesus. Save my youngins. Yeah. You don't hear that no more. No. Most time you will go over to somebody's house, all you hear is General Hospital or how or, or how the world turns or whatever that stuff is. Amen. He looked for somebody to be faithful in their prayer life. We talked Tuesday night about the little widow woman and the unjust judge, Brother Sleece. About how that she came to the unjust judge and she knocked and she asked him for something and he said no. Remember, Jesus is talking to us about prayer. Yeah. He starts out this parable by saying. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Right. So she asked and nothing happens. So what does she do? She asked again. See, we got a whole world of educated preachers out there supposed to be. Amen. Saying if you ask more than once, it's a sign of a lack of faith. You should just ask one time and just stand on it. Never ask God again. Well, they're stupid. Excuse my language. The Bible doesn't teach us that. Amen. The Bible says knock. Amen? Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. In this parable of these people trying to teach them how to pray, he says, this little widow woman, because of her persistent coming, because of her continual coming, because of her faithfulness, when that old judge tried to go to sleep, there she was. When that old judge tried to get up and enjoy his morning coffee, there she was. When that old judge tried to go out and to take his walk in the park, there she was. Avenge me of my adversary. Begging him, pleading with him. Come on. She just kept on praying. On, you know, finally, that old honorary judge who didn't regard man and he didn't even fear God, he said, because she keeps asking, I'm going to give it to her. And what was this an example of? What was Jesus using this for? That men ought always to pray and not to faint. Then he says at the ending of it, nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith. Shall he find somebody being faithful? Somebody still praying? I know you've prayed for your kids and things are getting worse. Keep praying. I know you've prayed for the financial miracle that you so badly need and it seems like things just keep getting worse. Keep praying. Amen? Keep knocking. Keep asking. Keep praying. Keep seeking. I had forgotten about this. Well, I hadn't really forgot about it. I just didn't relate it to what we've been talking about. To Brother Steve Houston brought this up this morning on Facebook. The prophet Elijah, in the middle of the drought, which is almost to the end of it, he's on Mount Carmel. We know that he calls the fire down, Brother Lease, and the fire comes down. And we know all of that. Now that it's getting ready that God's fixing to send rain. And it's in 1 Kings, the 18th chapter. 1 Kings, the 18th chapter. The Bible says, and I'm going to pick it up in about the 41st verse. Elijah speaking to Ahab. Jezebel's husband said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of an abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. This is a place where he just had the big victory. Amen? All right. And he cast himself down upon the earth, and he put his face between his knees, and he said to his servant, that's Gehazi, Go up now, look toward the sea, and he went up and he looked and he said, 
There is nothing. Oh, wait a minute. This is the man of God who just faced down the prophets of Baal and called fire down from heaven. Here he is. Now it's time to ask God to open the heavens. It's time to pray that prayer. So it's, the Bible says he goes up there, he, he throws himself down, he puts his, he, how does it say, he puts his head down, yeah, his face down between his knees, and he was praying. Amen. He wasn't checking for the freshness of his feet. He was praying. Amen. Come on. He was saying, God, send the rain. And he sends his servant, and guess what? The servant says, ain't nothing. How many times you ever felt like that? Amen. Brother Dave, how many times you prayed, Amen. and you looked around, and there's like nothing. Right. Nothing, nothing's yeah. changed. Yeah. Nothing's changed. Amen. Yeah. The enemy says, give up. Don't pray no more. Brother Dwayne, don't pray again. You, you'd already prayed. You asked God. Nothing happened. He must not want you to have it. Let's see what the prophet does. Oh, my goodness. Gehazi comes back and says, ain't nothing. And he said, go again. Seven times. Mm -hmm. Oh, you hear that? Yeah. He went to send the prophet. The, the servant goes the second time and he looks and there's still nothing. Yeah. And he comes back. And he sends him again. And he goes and looks another time and there's still nothing. And Elijah, he's still praying. And he's saying, give up. It ain't going to work. God ain't listening to you. He's still praying. Oh, I wish we had some saints that could get a hold of the horns of the altar and say, God, I ain't going to quit praying until I see you move. I'm not going to quit praying until I see my family saved. I'm not going to quit praying until I see my neighbors saved. I'm not going to quit praying until I get that financial breakthrough that I need. I'm not going to quit praying, Lord. Come on, brother. Oh, you remember that old song? Till the answer comes, I'm going to keep praying. Praying. Got to keep praying. Yes. Don't give up. Come on. Just because it seems like things ain't getting any better, don't quit praying. Come on, brother. God's still listening. Come on, say it. You remember what he told Daniel? Daniel prayed for 21 days <coughs> for an answer. Amen. Yeah. Seven, the number of completeness. He had to do that three times. Yes. Over and over. Yes. Nothing's happening. <clears throat> He's not seeing anything. Yes. <clears throat> and the Bible says <clears throat> that the Lord tells Daniel, <clears throat> I heard you the first day. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Well, yeah. <clears throat> but there was some opposition in the way. Amen. Right. That had to be removed. But then the answer came. Yeah. Then the answer came. Right. Elijah sends his servant up there and said, Go and look. And he said, There ain't nothing, boss. Yeah. He says, Go and look. There ain't nothing, boss. The whole time Elijah's praying. <laughs> and it came to pass at the seventh time. Listen to me. Verse 30, verse 44. <laughs> and it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold. This time he comes back and he says, Hey, I got some news. Whew, I see something now. Oh, oh my, my, my. Your prayers were not in vain. <laughs> Amen. Keep praying for your youngins, mama. Your prayers are not in vain. Amen. He says, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot and get thee down that the rain stop thee not. Come on. It's coming. It's coming. It didn't happen the first time. Just like the little the little woman there, that the, the widow woman, the unjust judge, she didn't get her answer the first time. She didn't get her answer the second time. I don't know how long she bugged this man. Probably a little while because he was a pretty cantankerous old codger. Amen? Yeah. So, so it, she probably had to bug him for a while for him to move. Go look again. Keep looking. Keep praying. Keep looking for the answer to come. Oh. Keep asking. Keep looking for the salvation of your children. Yeah. Keep asking. Keep looking for God to move in that situation that you're in the middle of. Amen. Keep praying. Keep asking. Keep knocking. Keep seeking. <laughs> be faithful. Even whenever there's discouragement, be faithful. Even whenever there's naysayers, be faithful. Even whenever it seems like there's nothing that is just keeps getting worse every day of your life, keep praying. Amen. Be faithful. Keep praying. Yes. Keep praying. Do you remember the story of Rispa? We used to preach on her every now and again on Mother's Day. She had two of the sons of Saul that David commanded to be slain for the revenge of the, I believe it was, well, I don't know, I'm not going to tell you the name of the people because I've done for God. I want to say the Amalekites, but that doesn't sound right. But anyway, 
a Bible scholar will email me and correct me. But whenever they slayed her sons, they hung them from a tree. And you see, according to the law, they're supposed to be taken down and buried the same day. They weren't supposed to be allowed to hang on a tree, but David forgot that. Or maybe done it on purpose. But if he did, he was defying the law they were supposed to be observing. What's this little mama do? The Bible says she goes out there and I believe it says that she spread out some sackcloth and ashes. See what it says. David delivers them into the hands of the Gibeonites. There we go. That will keep me from getting any emails. It's the Gibeonites, not the Amalekites. The Amalekites had the leader Agag. you remember that? And, yeah. and, and Saul spared him and all of that mess. And they hanged them in the hill before the Lord, and they fell all seven together. There were seven sons all together. Two of them belonged to Rizpah. And they were put to death in the days of the harvest, in the first days of the beginning of the barley harvest. Now Rizpah, the daughter of, us, of Aya, took sackcloth, and she spread it for her upon the rock. From the all oh, we could use... Can I stop for a minute? Yes, sir. We could use some of that. We could use spread some sackcloth on the rock right. and seek in God's face on the rock. Amen. Grab hold of that. Chew on that for a little bit. Praise God. Who is the rock? Jesus. <laughs> Amen. And it says she spread out sackcloth on the rock from the beginning of the harvest until water dropped upon them out of heaven. Mm -hmm. Now this is the most Bible scholars tell you this is like from April to October. This woman stays out there protecting the bodies of her children to keep the birds off of them, to keep the wild beasts off of them. Right. What she was really doing was petitioning David, get my sons off his tree and bury them, bury, on them, bury them like the law requires. Amen. Word gets back to David. This woman has been sitting out there all these months right. shooing off the birds, mm. beating the... the, the the beast back with a stick yeah. for her babies. They were dead. Her children, her sons, they were dead. No doubt by the time that they did take them down, there was nothing left but some bones. Right. I'm sure some people thought, now Rizpah, go on home. The king's, you've been out here all these months, the king's not going to do nothing about it. You're not going to get the answer that you want. Mm -hmm. They already went to bones. Now just go on home. Don't worry about it. The little mama just kept staying. Like the little widow woman of the unjust judge. Until she got her petition answered from God. A petition answered from the king. Amen. Until she got her petition answered from the king, she wasn't going to go nowhere. I'm here. I'm staying. There's beasts, I know, but I'm going to be faithful to this. There, there, there's cold, and I'm going to be faithful to this. There's heat, and I'm going to be faithful to this. There's weariness, and I'm going to be faithful to this. There's discouragement, but I'm going to be faithful to this. Right. So she stays out there till the king hears about it and he says, uh oh, go get them, take them down, and go bury them. Because the faithfulness of this little mama. Amen. All those months, Brother Slee, she stays out there in action. You know that Occupy Wall Street they talk about? Well, that's what she did. She <coughs> occupied. She occupied a rock out there next to that tree where her boys were hanging. Amen. To take them down, bury them like you're supposed to. All right. She was petitioning the king. This little widow woman over there in the Gospels was petitioning the unjust judge. God's telling us to continue to petition Him. Right. Continue to ask Him. Do you remember Cornelius? I've got to close. Do you remember Cornelius over there in the book of Acts? Yeah. Acts the 10th chapter. Cornelius was a man that was a just man. A godly man. He was a centurion of the, band of the, of the Italian man. He was a devout man, the Bible says. And they feared God with all his house. He gave much alms to the people and he prayed to God always. Yeah. He was faithful. Amen. And he saw in a vision about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius? Mm -hmm. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial, memorial before God. Did you hear that? Amen. He was a man that prayed to God always. Amen. And he gave faithfully. And he prayed faithfully. Right. And that had caused those things to come up before God as a memorial. Right. He was consistent in prayer. Consistent in his giving. And because of that, his answer came. He didn't give up. He continued to pray. 
The angel says, Send to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter. Wow. He lodgeth with one Simon the tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Mm. Now what happens? Because of his faithfulness in prayer, because of his faithfulness in giving, because of his faithfulness to God. Peter comes, preaches the word to him, the Holy Ghost falls, and they get filled with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Why? Because he was faithful. God's looking for a faithful people today. Amen. Somebody that will be faithful in prayer. Somebody that will be faithful to the Word. Somebody that will be faithful to His name. Amen. Amen. Right. The Bible says you've been faithful over a few things. He'll make you ruler over many. Yes, sir. You can't even get people to be faithful over a few things. Amen. I've heard people, people have told me, <clears throat> they said, when I, get a big, when I get a lot of money, I'm going to give the ministry some. Yeah. If you can't give when you got a little, you ain't going to give when you got a lot. Come on. Amen. I've learned that. Amen. I've learned that over the years because some of them people, guess what? They got some money. Right. But we didn't get none of it. Amen. Amen. True. But when I get a lot, I'm going to give you some. Well, if you be faithful in your little, you might end up with a lot. Come on. Amen. But until you're faithful with what you got, mm -hmm. I don't believe the Lord's going to give you no more. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Be faithful in giving. And really believe you haven't talked much about giving. You haven't talked much about being faithful to God's house. If you'll be faithful in the Word and faithful in prayer, you'll start being faithful in your giving and going to God's right. house. Amen. Because right. God's Word teaches us those things. Yes. Amen. That's Hallelujah. True. Be faithful. Be faithful in all you know, and the Lord will Amen. see you through. Somebody else have something this morning?